What's up Average Dad fans, welcome back to another video and Happy New Year! It's 2022, thank God 2021 is behind us, but I have a phone from last year that I didn't get around to reviewing when it was released. It is one of the best flagship phones of 2021, packing all of the key features plus more, so let's get into it. The Oppo Find X3 Pro. Let's go. So the Oppo Find X3 is an absolute marvel of design. Look at that camera mound. Absolutely groundbreaking in 2021. The fact that we've came this far and to my knowledge, nobody has designed a camera hump, mound, bump, whatever you want to call it, quite like this, is outstanding. And I think what Oppo have done here is tried something new and for me it paid off. Now it is a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. I obviously fall on the side of loving the, the camera bump itself. Now, as far as the rest of the design, it's a metal and glass flagship. It does have that super shiny reflective back glass that does pick up fingerprints. However, you can choose the matte blue finish. You can see a picture of that here. I chose the black for two reasons. One, it was the only one I could purchase at the time. And two, I quite like it. If you're outdoors, it'll reflect. It's a mirror, effectively. It's going to reflect the sun, the grass, so your phone goes blue or green. In a dark environment, it's obviously black. I really like it. And again, it doesn't take two seconds to wipe down or just slap a case on it. Now, the front of the phone is where the real magic happens. As much as there was a lot of magic going on in the rear with that camera mount, the front is, well, quite simply, the best display, bar none, on a flagship phone of 2021. Yes, the Sony iPro has a 4K resolution, but still not the best display. Now, here's why. The Oppo Find X3 Pro has a 120Hz refresh rate. That's nothing new. That's great. It has a quad HD plus resolution. That's more than any iPhone. Better than a lot. Most Samsungs. It's just better than most other phones to have both at the same time. Where the Oppo stands out, its tagline is awake in colour. And that's exactly what you get from here. Now, if you're a photo or photo editor, videographer and you're really interested in getting natural, exact colours, the only phone in the market that can do that, as of right now, is the Oppo Find X3 Pro. With its 10-bit colour, what that essentially means is you get over 1 billion colours compared to the 16 million that all other phones have. Okay. So, to the naked eye, that's not going to make a difference to you. However, knowing that it's there, so the full RGB colour gamut there, as mentioned, it's in 10 bit. When it comes to grading in post, so any colour grading, this takes care of itself. You can also view, obviously, your 10 bit colour photos and videos on that amazing 6.7 inch screen. Display wise, outstanding. Now, if you're consuming content, like most of us kind of do, you're going to do that with a stereo speaker setup. The stereo speakers themselves don't go as loud as the iPhone 13 Pro Max or the Samsung S21 Ultra. However, they are just as clear with as little distortion as the other two mentioned. So, if you are going to be consuming content without connecting Bluetooth headphones or wired headphones using a USB-C dongle, then 
you're not going to really use the external speakers. But if you are just relying on the external speakers, they are A minus compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and Samsung S21 Ultra's A plus external speakers. Other things about the phone, as mentioned, is USB C connection at the bottom. It does come included in the box, Apple, Samsung, take note, 65 watt Super VOOC charging. What does that mean in the real world? It means if you go for a shit shower and shave, your phone's going to be 100% charged because it takes less than 40 minutes. If you just go for a shower, you may only take 10 minutes to wash and dry, which means your phone will be almost 50% charged. In my real world test, I took 15 minutes to shower, came out, phone went from dead to 50% in that 15 minute time. Now the battery itself is a 4500 milliamp hour, not groundbreaking, not pushing any envelopes. However, when the phone charges that fast, not only will you comfortably get a day of use anyway, it does mean that if you just pop it on a charger for five, 10 minutes, you're gonna get two full days of use, 100%. Almost no matter what your usage. If you are playing Genshin Impact for 24 hours straight, then you're gonna kill, well, to be fair, actually, if you're playing Genshin Impact for over 11 hours, then the phone will die. But that 11 hour 3D gaming, so like Genshin Impact high intensity gaming, the Snapdragon Triple Eight chip included in this absolutely destroys any form of lag, skip frames, anything like that. You're you're absolutely fine to game on this to your heart's content. Um, another video I watched on this really good one, and I wish I could remember the name, but I can't. I watched far too many YouTube videos on tech, but they done a gaming test strictly, and the Oppo performed three or four hours longer on a full charge than the Samsung S21 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, everybody's been raving about how the 13 Pro Max has the best battery life. Well, that may be true with standby and surfing the web and even consuming YouTube videos for half a day straight. But when it comes to gaming, essentially using the CPU and GPU to its highest capabilities, yes, the phone will get a bit warm, but the battery will last you three or four hours longer than most any other phones on the market. And remember, this was a March 2021 phone. We'll get to the price soon. I know you want to hear the price. And I know you're thinking, where did you buy that beautiful phone? If you watched any of my videos previously, you'll probably guess when I managed to pick up this phone for a really good deal. Um, other things I want to discuss, the elephant in the room, the mound that we spoke about before on the back, is there for a reason, and that's to house the camera technology in sight. So what do you get? Well, it's a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel Sony, top of the line Sony sensor with a 50 megapixel lens. The ultra wide is the exact same top of the line Sony sensor with a 50 megapixel ultra wide lens. So yes, the exact same sensor is used on the wide main camera and the ultra wide. People say wide main camera, to be honest, I use ultra wide just as much. Ultra wide is better for vlogging, group photos, uh, landscapes, in my opinion. And that's where you'll notice on the phone you have in your hand right now, unless it's the Oppo Find X3, will change colors slightly. So because they're normally the ultra wide is a lower quality sensor than the wide camera or main camera. So you'll notice a slight color shift depending on the phone. iPhone do this really well, Samsung do it really well, but you can still notice it. Try it right now, get out your phone, take a wide angle picture and then keep the same angle, hit ultra wide, take the picture, you'll notice there's a slight difference in color changing. Because this is using the same sensor, you're getting the same quality on the wide and ultra wide lenses. Fantastic. One slight drawback is the third lens, and this is a five times hybrid, hybrid, sorry, optical zoom lens. The previous Find X2 
Pro, which I had and loved. I had it in an orange vegan leather. It had a five times optical periscope zoom, which went up to like 40 or 50 times. This one here is five times hybrid, so it's more like two and a half, maybe three times optical. And it'll go up to 20 times digital zoom. When you get past that five, sometimes 10 times zoom, the picture quality just degrades a bit too much. So for me, the one slight downfall is that the zoom lens could be a lot better. Apple is actually very similar, to be honest. However, when you do go up to 20 times on the 13 Pro Max, you are getting slightly better quality. The Samsung S21 Ultra absolutely destroys this. And to be honest, other than the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, every other phone in Zoom it even destroys that, to be honest. The Samsung Zoom, Samsung, I've done it right, but they do have two telephoto lenses. One's like a 20 or 30 megapixel, one's a 40 megapixel. So they, they, they focused all of their attention on that telephoto lens. And I can also tell you that that phone is way more expensive than this phone, brand new. The fourth lens, super exciting lens, is, I say super exciting, it's not really, but it's different. It's a three megapixel micro lens. So the ultra wide lens has macro capabilities. Again, with that 50 megapixel sensor, you're churning out really high quality macro images. However, the three megapixel micro lens is a micro scope, essentially. This can go for 30 or 60 times zoom. And the way it works is you pop the phone on the surface of what you want to literally lay it flat. And then what happens if I just give me a second while I, while I enable this. So I pop along to more, click on microscope and there, see at the back there, it has its own dedicated ring light, which I just absolutely love. I love it. I love this little gimmicky feature, but actually some of the pictures are, are incredible and they make for really good, like high quality wallpapers. And it's also a good game to take 10 random photos, take it to the wife or kids and say, guess what that is. I can guarantee they won't be able to guess. Like this picture here, I'm just showing up one picture example. So this, what do you think this is? I'll wait. It's my bed sheets. Yeah, no mess, thank goodness, but it's my bed sheets. That's, that's what it was a picture of um, in a micro scope lens. So yeah, love it. So overall, the cameras absolutely nail it other than the zoom. But again, if you're sticking within the five times hybrid, you're going to get really sharp 13 megapixel images from that. Now, I've mentioned the processor already. It is a Snapdragon 888. Snapdragon, I've just came out with the um, 8 Gen 1, but there's not many phones with that so far. The Motorola is the first one to have it. So really the Snapdragon 888 is the best on the market. So that's the phone. That's what it does. This is how it looks. You can make your own mind up as to if you like the design, if the specs match up to what you want. But before you make up your mind, you'll want to know the price. When this phone was released, brand new, back in March, it was £1,099. This is still £100 less than the Samsung S21 Ultra. Also bear in mind, don't think I've actually touched on this, internally this phone has 256 gigabytes of storage. That's just what you get, there's no more, there's no less. It also has 12 gigabytes of RAM. No more, no less. That's the phone. When you're ordering a Find X3 Pro, you have one choice. 256 gigabytes of storage and 12 gigabytes of RAM. So again, another reason why it can just crush multitasking any other tasks. Um, the phone as well is running on Color OS 11.2 just now. Color OS 12 should be updated in the next few months. I personally really enjoy the Color OS operating system. With Oppo also owning, or the owner of Oppo also own OnePlus, so Oxygen OS and ColorOS are two of the best Android skins for me on the market. 
as far as customization, personalization, I mean, you can you can literally change how the fingerprint reads, how the charging animations read, the edge lighting, that you can change it all. Live wallpapers, um, yeah. Customization and personalization on most Android devices is phenomenal, but on the Oppos and OnePluses, they're just a cut above. Also uh, on Xiaomi's, and when you've got an iPhone in your pocket, by the way, I obviously still have my iPhone, but you ain't getting that sort of customization on your Cupertino device. So price, $699. Yep, £699 through Amazon Renewed. Yes, if you're watching this video and you've seen previous videos, I am an absolute whore for Amazon Renewed. For those watching in the States, whore, ho. There you go, I'm a hoe for Amazon Renewed, meaning I use it all the time. For me, I need to buy, I buy these devices. I don't get given them yet. Maybe in 2022, somebody will send me a phone to review. But until then, I need to purchase these devices and invariably I need to sell them on. Unless there's something wrong completely with the device, the Amazon Renewed um, program does give a full one year return policy. Anyway, I'm not going into that. I've made a separate video about Amazon Renewed, probably two or three. The um, Oppo was £699.99. With that, you get the phone in immaculate condition. No scratches, nothing. Uh, this phone came with still 100% battery life, but Amazon guarantees a minimum of 80% battery life. Comes with a USB-C to C cable and uh, came in the box with a 25 watt charger. So I guess if you're buying it brand new, it would be a 65 watt charger. But again, on the Oppo website, the phone is still £1,099. So I didn't think it was worth paying an extra £400 for an extra 40 watts of charging. Bear in mind, I can pick up a charging brick for about 30 quid. So yeah, there we have it. That's the Oppo Find X3. That's how much it cost me. I, <clears throat> I'm not going to make any bold claims that I'm going to keep this phone for however long because the Google Pixel 6 is now gone, sold. Um, I did love that phone, I really did, but I, yeah, I really don't like sticking with an Android for too long, um, especially 2022 is going to be a mad year for Android phones. Now, 2022 is going to be a crazy year for Android phones um, and Apple later on in the year, but for Android specifically, I mean, already we've had, what are we, January the 4th? And we've had already a couple of releases, most notably the Samsung S21 Fan Edition. Yep, the S21 Fan Edition came out in 2022. Go figure. I'm interested to see MKBHD's thoughts and uh, Mr. Who's the Boss. Um, me personally, I won't be purchasing the phone. I think it's going to retail in the UK at around £650. Um, I literally just told you that the Oppo was £699. Um, and it's a four or five times better phone than the FE. The FE, FE has a plastic back, for example. It's got a 1080p panel rather than the 1440p Quad HD plus resolution on this one. Um, so I won't be buying it. I won't be reviewing it. Um, however, later on in the month, the S22 Ultra, that will be here in the... Sounds a bit arsey to say studio because it's not in my office. I'll also have the OnePlus 10 Pro in the office over the next couple of months. And the Xiaomi, hopefully, I need to get some sort of connection uh, to get this, but I want the Xiaomi Mi 12 Ultra. I never actually got hold of the 11 Ultra. So, yeah, hopefully I can have that in the next couple of months as well. And that's just three, and these are three absolute top-shelf um, Android phones. Really like the OnePlus 9 Pro last year, so excited about the OnePlus 10 Pro. See if that Hasselblad collaboration uh, and the camera technology is actually going to make a difference now. Um, yeah, so thanks again for, for watching this video. Thanks again for all the support last year. Last year I reached 1200 plus subscribers. If I can make it over the 2000 mark this year. In fact, I've just thought about it now. My goal is to have 2022 subscribers for next year. Really appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.